John 3.16. It's on signs, t-shirts, shoes, athletes' faces, under coffee cups, on the side of coffee cups. It's in coffee. Ask any stranger on the street if they know a Bible verse, and the familiar words of John 3.16 are probably what you'll hear in response. This verse is the most searched verse on Google and regularly tops the Bible app's most searched list. However, did you know John 3.16 wasn't always the most popular passage of scripture? In the early church writings, the number of quotes from John 3.16 are actually very small compared to some of the more popular, most referenced passages, like John 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 26. By the Middle Ages, it still didn't even make the top 10. Dr. Beth Allison Barr analyzed sermons from the Middle Ages and found the 10 most referenced Bible passages. The most popular passages in this period of Christian history was actually Matthew 25, 34 to 41, where Jesus talks about the sheep and the goats, followed by John 8, 31 to 47, about hearing and obeying. John chapter three doesn't even feature. But in recent decades, John 3.16 has soared into the zeitgeist of popular culture, in part due to celebrity athletes such as footballer Tim Tebow famously wearing the verse under his eyes. Tim shared a story that has become a legend about the 2012 Denver Broncos versus Pittsburgh Steelers game. He recounts talking to his PR agent. He said, it's exactly three years later from the day that you wore John 3.16 under your eyes. I was like, oh, that's really cool. He said, no, I don't think you realize what happened. During the game, you threw for 316 yards. Your yards per rush were 3.16. Your yards per completion were 31.6. The ratings for the game were 31.6. And the time of possession was 31.6. And during the game, 90 million people had already Googled John 3.16. It was the number one trending thing on Facebook and Twitter. Now, the story is cool and all, but it's a little exaggerated. Yes, he did pass 316 yards, and the team had 316 receiving yards. But his yards per rush were actually 5, not 3.16, and the team average was 3.9. The possession stat was actually 31.06. I guess that's kind of close to 316, but that was for the other team. Denver's possession was 29 minutes, and the TV ratings were actually 25.9. It was reported that 31.6 was the final quarter hour peak. A coincidence or a sign, you'll have to be the judge of that one. Oh wow, look at this sandwich, $3.16. And there goes the number 316 bus. A parking fine, $316. I wonder if this is a sign. It is. Don't park in a school zone. So when did this little Bible verse become the summary of the Christian message and the most popular verse of them all? Searching historical literature, usage of the phrase only begotten son took off in the 1800s. This coincides with the Protestant revival movement known as the Second Great Awakening. One of the leaders of the movement, Charles Finney, featured John 3.16 prominently in his sermons and writings, opening his sermon, God's Love for a Sinning World, with the verse in 1853. But it wasn't until recent decades that John 3.16 moved out of the Christian church world and became the cultural phenomenon that it is today. According to Professor of Evangelism Brian P. Stone at the Boston University School of Theology, it wasn't until the 70s that this verse soared in popularity, when born-again Christians started holding John 3.16 signs at stadiums as a way to spread the gospel. The most famous figure of that era was an eccentric man named Roland Stewart. They called him Rock and Roller, the Superfan, the Rainbow Man. If you watched any major sporting event in the last 15 years, you've seen Roland Stewart in the background. He would dance with a John 316 sign while dressed in a rainbow colored wig, positioning himself behind the goal post at football games, the home plate at baseball games, and the backboard at basketball games. Stewart, who was nicknamed the Rock and Rollin' Rainbow Man, was notorious on television well into the 80s and is credited with popularizing John 316. Sadly though, Stewart would go on to commit multiple felonies and is currently serving life in prison. His story is the subject of the 1997 documentary Rainbow Man. 
But the John 3.16 legacy would live on and the verse would become a symbol for Christian sports fans, leading to its spread into wider culture. It's worth noting that whatever the catalyst, the verse would not have become so popular if it didn't resonate with people. For many Christians, this verse has encapsulated the idea of God's love for the world through Jesus and made it easily shareable. So there you have it, from 1800s revival sermons to signs at sporting matches, that's the story of the rise in popularity of John 3.16. But while this verse still regularly tops most search lists, it's starting to get some stiff competition. In 2019, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 topped the most search list on Bible Gateway. And in 2020, Isaiah 41.10 was the most read and bookmarked verse in the Bible app. So maybe John 3.16's days at the top are numbered. If you liked that video and learned something new, leave us a comment and let us know what you thought. Make sure you like the video, share it around and subscribe to the channel. My name's Lachlan, you've been watching Bible Unboxed and I'll see you in the next video.